Shalom, my friend Jonathan here. I just wanted to speak to you before you see this presentation uh, I have for you and kind of set the stage and clarify some things uh, before you see it. Now, this access term is personal to me. And the reason for showing it uh, and, and showing it, sharing it with the students uh, is to demonstrate that an individual person uh, can be found in isolated, uh, encoded in the scriptures. Um, even terms that are unique to a person. Um, I think you'll see the, the extreme amount of detail uh, that's involved. And what I'm about to share with you is just a scratch on the surface. And uh, furthermore, let me just say this as well. What is found about me in this table and what I share um, can also be true for others. I am not the only one that's encoded here. Um, so the fact that I'm sharing these terms and phrases and scriptures with you uh, is is not unique just to me. Um, it is to, uh, I think in some cases, uh, you can see the uniqueness to me with, um, you know, the level of detail with the number of children. I have 10 children. All are found here in, in close proximity. Um, it's, it's pretty impressive, um, to, to see that you can extract information about individual people. Um, the point in, in showing this is not only is the codes, uh, capable of reconciling scripture, it also contains information, uh, about people. This is why you have said before you were formed in your, in your mother's womb, I knew you, I knew your name. Uh, he knows the hairs on your head. And a vast amount of detail about you, which is recorded. Now, um, so with that being said, uh, don't flood my email with requests in looking you up. Uh, if you're interested in doing that, I can teach you how to look yourself up. I simply don't have time uh, to be you know, do, doing personal uh, demonstrations. Uh, and, and that's basically what it is. It's I think it edifies. Um, it, it certainly brings confirmation in many cases in some sense it can warn um, because good and bad information um, could also be there um, so shalom i hope you're blessed by this and if you're interested in the school uh, please look at the link down below and check us out and uh, we'll talk to you and get you enrolled shalom now, the reason Darla and I were talking about the word Malak is because it appeared in this table here. Uh, well, it says Malak of Yahuwah right here. Um, this is the code searcher table that I wanted to share yesterday uh, with extreme detail in this. Um, every one of my children, even the ones I've adopted and Keaton are all here. Um, Darla, um, even Chris Ray, this is, you know, years ago when I first found this, before I was divorced. Um, and by the way, Kelly and all of, all of my other children are over at, in this area. They're not here now. I didn't re reproduce that in this table. Um, but they are over here in this area with Micaiah and Keaton. Um, but uh, years ago when I did this, um, we found a lot. Like Chris, Chris Ray has a presence in here as well as some other people that I knew and have known. Um, but at the time when, when, when we were first looking at this, I had no idea who Darla was. Here's Darla's name right there. Um, the Dalit Resh Lamed Hay. And Tobe, look at Tobe is right next to it, which is good, right? Um, Darla's also vertical here. Now, at the time, we didn't know that. I didn't know who Darla was, but uh, a very significant area in my tables right here because my name Jonathan goes frontwards and backwards on the same point. You see that it's, it's Yod Vav Noon Tav Noon Jonathan and then Yod Vav Noon Tav Noon Jonathan is virtually like a mirror image with the Tav in the very center, right? So it's like an eagle's, looks to me like an eagle with a Tav in the center. Um, the anomaly that goes across is Ben Or, son of light, right there. Um, Darla appears vertical with Lev right under that. You see the, the two red letters, that's Lev, which is heart. 
Darla's heart. And then daughter of Jerusalem is what that sits on. Now, just on the other side where, where you also find Leb incidentally, it's a, it's a mirror image, Leb, the heart this way and, and Leb going the other way from Benor. But that verse that this is attached to, it says in the Torah or in the law of Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel. Um, then we have an anomaly that is in reverse. Uh, so this is, um, you know, unique in itself in the fact that it's in reverse, but it's in this table unique to me. And this is uh, Mem Ibrites from the Hebrew. Ibrite in reverse right there. Um, vertical, we've got Matthew, the husband. Um, I think there is an extension here, but uh, I didn't have it highlighted because I haven't ver you know, finished verifying what I think it means. Um, but it, if it does, it changes. Yeah, the permutation, and it, when you're working with extensions, may change the actual uh, structure and the, the direction of what's being said here. Because without that extension, it says Jonathan the husband. But with it, uh, it could possibly say, and I'm, I'm still trying to verify this, Jonathan has, has had dreams. And then the word Zophan right next to that, which is hidden. Um, and again, that's based on different permutations uh, onto what that says. But just on the other side of that, um, there's no question um, that we got Nabi, which is prophet. And then the sequence of letters after that is, uh, he, he's a trembling prophet. A trembling prophet. Um, all the kids are here. We can go through the, to the, Canaan is listed here. He's also listed here. Uh, Kaylin runs right through here. And she's also over here um, with her sister, Rachel. And look at what Rachel's name does. Rachel's name does like a little cross. But it says, children of Israel, Malak of Yahuwah, which is messengers of Yahuwah, and also Ephraim is stacked right on top of that. And all those things I believe to be true. Um, then we got Shilakai, which is my, my emissaries, my emissaries. Uh, and I've included Darla in that. That's why I think that appears, but it connects with the Dabar Yuhua, the word of Yuhua. So the emissaries of my word, uh, Jonathan appears in the plain text um, here. Uh, it's also here in an ELS with my, the year I was born. Look at this. The year I was born crosses right here, but also significant verses that run through there. We'll, I'll show those in a minute, but uh, he is my servant, these five letters and he's my servant. And then again, the word hot uh, the prophets, and then significant verse runs through there. Um, in the time of distress, which is a point in time, guys, that's um, unique to the end times, the time of the Gentiles is called the time of distress. So it says here, in the time of distress, computer in the plain text, one, two times, and then an ELS here in the same line that my name is in. That is at another ELS, Jonathan is in here. Um, my son, Ashlyn, and uh, significant vertical um, anomaly there. I wanna verify the Atash, um, but without the Atash, we've got in the name, he comes in my name, excuse me, not in the name, in my name, Bet Shin, Shin Mim Yod. So Ashlyn's name in my name, right? Um, Judah, of course, that's not really hard. Judah is all in the, in the text, but I have a son named Judah. Um, I also have a son named Micaiah and his name is vertical right here. Incidentally, this is also the area that all three of my sons that are not in uh, my custody also appear. However, I don't have them here right now. This is also the place where my ex-wife appears. Oh, all over in this area with Jonathan spelled with a hey in this case, because you can sp spell Jonathan a couple of different ways. Uh, Yohanatan, 
or um, without the, the hay. But you got Jonathan with the hay, Ephraim, and then significant uh, cluster of, of things here with Micaiah, Keaton in the blue and Micaiah in the yellow, um, both of our sons. Um, what else am I missing? And then, then of course, all the highlighted um, verses. And this is just a, a scaled back version of this. I was, I was able to pull out so much information previous and this, that, did that transition? Let's just share it again. Yeah. It did transition. Okay, good. You mean back to you? No, to this right here. Okay. This is, this is that very same table. Um, worked in a different way, and it's I think Chris Ray's name is in here. If I can remember where that is. Mm. Jonathan is your was your access term code searcher? Yes. Okay. It's codes searcher of the codes is basically what, how it's translated, but but it, uh, English it would be the code searcher. Um. Yeah. So so uh, this is the one I worked years ago with the. Uh, like I said, lots of details. Stephen Ben Danoon is in here, uh, which I had encounters with. I also had encounters with Jonathan Kahn, um, which is also in here. Um, uh, but yeah, going back over to the current one, um, like I said, I scaled it back. So it's a little easier to, uh, to navigate when you get so many terms and so much information it gets busy and it's hard to see what's going on but um if you if you overlaid those um even with two or three versions of this and you can do that you can open up three different windows of the program of the same thing and work it uh, to different points and uh, it's basically just splitting your work up into a few different hands and working it from there. All goes to the same one, it's just not as busy. And uh, I've done that quite frequently in, in working tables, but for the most part this, and it's just one of three. There are three occurrences of the code searcher that appears uh, encoded. And, and all three uh, have an incredible amount of, um, <laughs> of information, guys. I mean, and, and I would challenge you when we start working with CodeFinder, there's an there's an, a file in there of a monkey text, and I forget which one it, whether it's uh, it might, Gone with the Wind or Moby Dick, one of those two. You can you can test to see uh, if, in other words, you got you got the scriptures and a controlled text. So for those that will imply that we are manipulating the scriptures to make this happen, we can test with a control and show variations in, in whether or not something happens um, across the board or not. Um, and you will not find this level of detail, uh, names, dates, places, uh, you, you know, significant um, information, um, interesting anomalies that come together. Like, you know, Darla's heart and daughter of Jerusalem is a fascinating to me that that's there and in close proximity to my name with another amazing anomaly which is this a sun of light uh, that runs through there and uh yeah so they when, when you're working on things that are more personal to you facts that you know about and in doing this guys when you led me to do this um initially it wasn't in looking for my future um like if, will, will i be divorced and things like that things that were at that time very imminent and i had no idea they were imminent i had full confidence that Yahuwah was going to restore my marriage. I was standing on that. I was praying for that, you know, um, rebuking any of that that said, just let her go, uh, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, so I wasn't looking whether I was going to be divorced, and yet it happened. Um, never did understand why she had such a proximity to me in this access term way over here in the, in the right periphery, um, unlike Darla, which has a direct role in, in two different significant places i think um we can go and read uh that line that runs through there which is in samuel um 
refresh. Let's go back. Okay. I'm going to read some, <clears throat> some of the lines that go through there. Um, there we go. Are you guys able to see? <clears throat> so 1 Samuel chapter 9. Um, and it's really interesting on what's going on, on here because this is a significant point in, <clears throat> in time, in history. Right? Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zoor, the son of uh, Bokarath, the son of uh, Aphniah, the son of the Benjamite, a mighty man of valor. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a young and goodly, and there was not, uh, he was not among the children of Israel as a goodlier person than he. Uh, from his shoulders and upwards, he was higher than any of the other people. So he was a tall chap. Uh, and, and now the asses of Kish, Saul's father, uh, were lost. And Kish said to his son, uh, to Saul, his son, take now one of the servants with thee and arise and go seek the asses. And he passed through the hill country of Ephraim. And he passed through the land of uh, Shalishasha. And they found them not. And, but then they passed through the land of Shalim. And they were, and they were not. And he passed through the land of the Benjamites, but he found them not. So there's a lot of running around, looking, searching, right? And when they came to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servants that was with him, "Come and let us return, lest my father leave, caring for the asses and become anxious concerning us." And he said unto them, "Behold, now there is in this city." a man of Elohim, and this man is held an honor. All that he has said cometh surely comes to pass. Now let us go thither. Peradventure, he can tell us concerning on our journey whereon we go. Okay, so they're going to go get some counsel from this man of Elohim um, who has a knack for knowing things that people uh, don't know. Right. So then said Saul to his servant, but behold, if we go, what shall we bring this man? For the bread is spent in our vessels and there is not a present to bring the man of Elohim what we have. And then the answers, uh, the servant answered Saul and again and said, behold, I have in my hand a fourth part of a shekel of silver that I will give to the man of Elohim to tell us our way. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of Elohim, thus he said, come and let us go see the seer. Right? You get where this is going? This is what's highlighted here. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. Then said Saul to his servant, well said, let's uh, come, let's go. And so they went into the city where the man of Elohim was. And as they went up to ascent, ascent to the city, they found young maidens going down to draw water and said unto them, is this seer here? And they answered them and said, he is behold, he is before thee. Make haste now for he has come to the day and to the city for the people have a sacrifice uh, uh, today in the high places, in the high place. And as soon as ye come into the city, ye shall straightway find him. For behold, he go up to the high place to eat, for the people will not eat until he come, because he does not bless the sacrifice. And afterwards, uh, they eat that are, are bidden. And now, therefore, get ye up, for at this time ye shall find him. And when they went up to the city, and they came in within the city, behold, Samuel came out toward them. This is the first appearance of the prophet Samuel, who was in, in those days, he was called a seer, okay, to go up to the high place. And now Yahuwah had revealed unto Samuel a day before Saul came. Uh, Saul came. So before Saul even uh, came up there, Yahuwah had already revealed himself to it. But the whole point of this in the code searcher table is this runs right through a significant point 
of um, of this table with Darla's name in there. That's that's where Darla is in nine ten, which is um, pretty interesting because this is the the servants um, going into the city where they found uh, the maidens drawing water, and then uh, my my last name. In verse uh, nine, chapter nine, verse nine, the very last word, hey, resh, alaf, hey, the resh, alaf, hey, that's how you spell my last name. Yeah. Is that over this way? Resh, alaf? Uh, uh, it's in between where it right says. Uh, I see it right there. And I believe on this side is where Chris is, and, but it's not in this table. So you're right about that. Ray is the last three letters of that. That's pretty cool. It's there one, two, three times in both. It's at the end of both verse nine and verse eleven. Then let's look at this. Uh, this here in Second Samuel, chapter seven. Um. Now, in context to the Axis term, we're not talking about uh, the context of what's going on with David here, but in context of the Axis term, think of it that way. We look at verse, um, twenty-five, and now uh, Yehuel Elohim the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house, confirm thou it forever to do as thou hast spoken and let thy name be magnified forever that it may be said, Yahuwah Zavaot is Elohim over Israel and the house of thy servant David shall be established before thee. For thou, Yahuwah Zavaot, the Elohim of Israel has revealed to thy servant I will build uh, thee a house. Therefore, has thy servant taken heart to pray uh, this prayer unto thee? And, um, I, you know, I, I felt that is significant um, in in the establishment of the ministry and in um, me standing on the scripture as for me and my house, which I. Uh, I, I pinned up in my house. This enraged my former wife. I, I underwent a lot of persecution um, and therefore subsequent removal of said family. Um, but uh, I still stand on that principle and are yoked to a woman who also lives by that. Right. And so. Um, Jonathan, that's very cool. Uh, the verse uh, where Darla's name is in that area about the maidens drawing water. Uh, yeah. you, could, you could just read maidens drawing water as uh, women getting water. But if you think of Darla and her life and drawing water, like in a sewed meaning, yeah. that's really awesome. It's really cool that you picked that up because <clears throat> the other story of maidens drawing water and where a wife is involved is in what story, right? The, the drawing water is also a picture of living water. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're taking it up. It's not like just there for you. You are actually the partaker of getting it, you know? Then this, uh, we got this little, I, I, I see that sewed connection and, uh, you know, I'm not going to bring it out. Mm -hmm. First of all, this some of the deep things that I've seen in this table uh, will will be that way. But uh, there are things in, for instance, your own uh, mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit will reveal. That's a deep connection that uh, only the Father can know, right? Um, but uh, that's really cool that you can point that out in my table. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, so we're at eight fifty five King First Kings. <clears throat> Here, I also like this, which is where Jonathan runs down through that. Um, and there are so many that you can see anomalies. Trust me, I'm not uh, any better than anybody else. Anybody else that's encoded, you can find the same kind of anomalies in your table. Um, you will has has all like this, right? Um, this is just unique to me. Um, there are tables that are unique to you. So, uh, and he stood and blessed all the congregation. This is talking about Moses uh, at this point. And he blessed in the, all, all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice. And I like that that is um, connected to my birthday. Kol Gadol. 
a great voice, a loud voice. I see that as, as what he's given me as a platform for this ministry. But he's, from my birth, established that, right? Um, let's see, down here, we're in Isaiah by this point, 40th chapter, uh, verse 5. And the glory of Yahuwah shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of Yahuwah had spoken it, and the voice shall... Uh, the verse said, cry, and he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withered, and the flower faded, because the spirit of Yahuwah bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass, and the grass where it withered, and the flower fadeth. But the word of our Elohim shall stand forever. O Zion, the, that bringest good tidings, get thee up. To the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings. Lift up thy voice with strength and lift it up. Be not afraid. Say to the cities of Jehuda, uh, Yehuda, Behold your Elohim. Oh, that's good. Behold, Yadonai Elohim will come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule them. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work is before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd, and he shall gather the lambs with his arm, and he shall carry them in his bosom. He shall greatly lead those that are with young. That's such a beautiful, and that's a, that's a prophecy um, about Yeshua, the second coming. Um, so then, then uh, I saw a connection down below actually i actually saw highlighted there in the name i didn't know what it was or in my name so i went to look and then of course it's jeremiah twenty seven fifteen. um and this is something that i've encountered um, a lot especially when you was giving me something to share um something from his scripture that is actually prophetic for our time but then there would be a modern day quote prophet who would come much like what happened to Jeremiah when he spoke the words, there was these false prophets who came and said, Oh no, King, it's not going to happen like that. Good things are going to happen. Better days are ahead. Yada, yada, yada. But, but you know, then, then history will prove the three incursions of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the third being quite fatal for Judah. Um, and the false prophets were wrong the whole time. They were leading the people astray. And here I see this uh, part of Jeremiah's story. For uh, Therefore hearken not unto the words of the prophets that speak unto you, saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie to you. Remember, um, Jeremiah was coming and said, uh, Look, folks, Yahuwah has declared it. We have to submit to Nebuchadnezzar. He is the anointed one that's going to bring the judgment on us. So we have to submit. But then there was prophets that were going, no, oh, no, king. Uh, who is, has already won the battle. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar is defeated. He will not take the city, right? Because there was three incursions. And on the third is when uh, he, he came and took the city. Um, but uh, we see that today with, with um, those that want to push um, Kim Clement and Mark Taylor stuff as if um, these are the prophets we're supposed to follow. Yet they're contrary to what the prophets of the scriptures say. Um, and so there's an issue there for me, right? America is, is you always know respect of persons. And America is not above reproach or judgment. Um, I don't care who the forefathers are. Because you know, people argue that, oh, well, our forefathers, they, they consecrated this nation and da 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 da, and Yahuwah would never abandon us. Oh, well, really? Anytime Israel walked away and disobeyed and was disobedient of Yahuwah, what happened? He withdrew himself from them, and their enemies were able to overtake them. Um, America is n n no different. So, uh, without repentance, without coming back to him, and I don't mean on a national level, uh, it's inevitable. Judgment will eventually happen as a nation. Um, but yet, uh, 
you'll find those that, that, that come against that and say, oh no, America's going to be seven times greater. Um, and of course, Psalms, let's go to the one where, my, where my, uh, Jonathan is actually encoded in Psalm 79. I just happened to be led the other day to read Psalm 79. Here's my name in there, right next to Psalm 80, which is another favorite of mine, where, where Benjamin Ephraim and Manasseh are stirred together. And that, I think, is prophetic to the time we're in now. Um, we see that happening in the Messianic uh, movement, uh, the Restoration Movement. Um, 79. I'm frozen. Well, that's wonderful. Are we unfrozen now? Again, yes. You'll, you'll get back. Yes, good. All right, so we'll go back to. Um, For they have devoured Jacob and laid waste. And I'm, of course, I should probably get the context. Uh, Psalm of Asaph, O Yahuwah, the heathen have come unto thine inheritance, thy holy temple they have defiled, and they've laid Jerusalem on heaps, the dead bodies of thy servants. Have they given to be me to the fowls of the air, the flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the earth? I mean, I can see this uh, will happen. Um, or this is revelation to me. Not literal revelation as, as far as prophetic, but the book of Revelation in the story of uh, 79 here, um, Psalm 79. Dead bodies of thy servants have they given to be meat to the fowls of the air, the flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the earth. Their blood have they shed like water round about Jerusalem, and there was none to bury them. I can see this as um, you who has two witnesses. We are becoming a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn, a derision to them that are round about us. How long, Yehua, wilt thou be angry forever? Shall thou jealousy burn like fire? Pour out thy wrath upon the heathen that have not known thee and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name. For they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place. Remember not against his former iniquities, and let thy tender mercies speedily prevent us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O Yahuwah, of our salvation, for the glory of thy name and deliver us, and purge away our sin, for thy name's sake. Wherefore we should the heathen say, where is their Elohim? Let him be known among the heathen in the sight of, of the revenging of the blood of thy saints, which is shed. Let the sighting of the prisoner come before thee according to the greatness of thy power. Preserve thou those that are appointed to die. And render unto our neighbors sevenfold unto their bosom their reproach, wherewith they have reproached thee, O Yahuwah. Um, and that's, that's 79 and 80, going into 80. Uh, just under that is another psalm. It's a series of psalms. Uh, here's a mention of Eph Ephraim in Psalm 108. Right, O oh, Yahuwah, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise, even with my glory. Awake, psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O oh, Yahuwah, among the people. I will praise. Uh, I will sing praises unto thee among the nations, for thy mercy is great among the heavens, and thy truth reaches to the clouds. Be thou exalted, O oh, Yahuwah, above the heavens, and thy glory above the earth. Uh, that thy beloved may be delivered, save with thy right hand, and answer me. You who had spoken in his holiness, and I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem and uh, meet out of the valley of Sukkot. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of mine hand ahead. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my washpot. And over Edom will I cast out my shoe. Over Philistia will I triumph. 
and who will bring me into a strong city and who will lead me in, into, o, into Edom? Wilt thou, uh, wilt not thou, O Yahuwah, who cast us off and wilt thou, O Yahuwah, go forth with our hosts? Give us help from trouble for vain is the help of man. Though Yahuwah, through Yahuwah, shall we do valiantly for he is it that we shall tread down our enemies. Hallelujah. I just read the whole of 108. And that is with Ephraim. You see Ephraim in the plain text there. And then I believe this is the next one. What is that? Yeah. Oh, that's uh, Proverbs. This is my favorite. This is at the base of the access term, which is the code searcher. And it says this. The name of the Yahuwah is a strong tower, and the righteous run to it and are safe. Hallelujah. Um, so that's just a fraction. Just, like I said, scratching the surface uh, of what's in one code searcher table. Uh, you know, to me, when, when, I'm, when I see myself in the codes like this, uh, it's couple of things take place one um i find comfort from the holy spirit that who has thought enough of me that i'm included in such a way now i'm like like i said not special each of you hold a place in here uh in a, in some way in my table and in your own where you're also listed um, and you will find the same kind of anomalies, the same kind of details where, where you've got children, uh, you know, things that only you know that you can plug in there. Um, the interaction with those words and verses in some, so, in some cases on the so level will speak to you personally. Sometimes others can see the connection as well, which uh, gives, gives you confirmation. Um, and I find... Uh, and then there's no one that can talk me out of the validity of, of the codes. Um, I don't think he put us here for us to know our future and change things as Michael draws and will have you to believe. But um, I think it gives us confidence um, that his word is true and that he is so mighty that in the actual scriptures he gave us a love letter a way of salvation is the inclusive uh past present and future in there it just baffles the mind uh for for someone to, to say um oh you can find this in any scripture or any any book any uh any works no you can't and you can test that <laughs> we need witnesses to 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 show this because of some for some reason there's a is a level of knowledge about codes that uh, oh you can do this in any any work that is not the case um i, I assure you that so anyway that's the code searcher in uh the codes that was really wonderful yeah, that was very beautiful jonathan mm -hmm. thank you mm -hmm. yeah thank you well, may the Father be glorified because this is this is a testament of His greatness. Um, you know, on a level that that some can can visualize, and it takes a certain kind of mind. Those it's usually atheists who have like a mechanical kind of logical thinking process. Um, if they can see something that is that's a mathematical science, a biblical science, um, how can this be explained? Um, you encounter problems like Michael draws and did, where he had he's like he he didn't want to admit that there was a creator, so his his step was, well, it's got to be a higher being like aliens, maybe, right? So he he got to that point, and and that's as far as he got, but. Obviously, his conclusions were preposterous, but um, for the for the most part, I've seen uh, this effective to those who are questioning whether there's an Elohim, 
or um, they're right on that fence level. Yeah, could be a tipping. It kind, of, it kind of pushes people to the very brink of their decision with the Almighty, don't you think? I would think so. Like, if they can't accept this, what could they accept? <laughs> right. And so uh, my yeah. point in showing you guys um, the code search are encoded is uh, so that you can see that it's not just about sh reconciling the scriptures and being able to show that you can um, understand what, what these chapters and verses mean. Um, it also has people, places, and times and things of history that's happened contained in there, as well as the future, um, which is, you know, I don't know what the percentage of that is. I would assume, you know, it's a great part of it. Uh, you know, that's still unknown, but uh, even with facts that you, you can know about yourself, once you, you've located yourself in the codes, it's just a matter of, of, you know, coming up with the terms. You know all the facts about you, um, right? So it's either there or it's not there. And if it's there, I would bet that it's in some sort of very deep level uh, that it's there. 